Good evening, everybody. Our top stories, President Trump's legal team going on the offensive against the Russia witch hunt on the eve of the Manafort trial, the first courtroom test of the special counsel and his band of angry Democrats. We'll break down the latest developments. Former federal prosecutor Tom Dupree joins us, as does Fox legal analyst Greg Jarrett. Also, President Trump issuing an ultimatum to Dems and rhinos in Congress. Either pay for the wall and secure our borders from the waves of criminal illegal immigrants or face a shutdown of our government. It's time we had proper border security. We're the laughing stock of the world. We have the worst immigration laws anywhere in the world. Republican strategist Ed Rollins joins us tonight, weighing in on the latest White House tactics to repair America's broken borders and deadly wildfires raging through Northern California. A trail of destruction will have the latest breaking news on the efforts to contain those runaway fires. Our top story tonight, the president's fight against the Mueller witch hunt. President Trump summing it all up in a tweet this weekend. The president said, quote, there is no collusion. The Robert Mueller rigged witch hunt headed now by 17 increase from 13, including an Obama White House lawyer. Angry Democrats was started by a fraudulent dossier paid for by crooked Hillary and the DNC. Therefore, the witch hunt is an illegal scam. The president's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, also making the rounds saying it's looking less likely that there will be a sit-down between the president and the special counsel. Everything that's been released so far shows the president to be absolutely innocent. He didn't do anything wrong. This is the theater of the absurd. The the, the president's innocence, having done nothing wrong, has been proven over and over again. I would ask the special uh, counsel to put out his report and show us what he's got. You know, show your hand. They haven't gotten back to us in 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 10 days over our recommendation of how to do an interview. I am, I am sure they're in bad faith about an interview at this point. I'm no on a sit down until, until we get, uh, we get ironed out exactly what they want to do. Hi, right now, I'm telling them no way. No way. That comes as the Mueller witch hunt enters the biggest challenge period tomorrow. The trial against former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort. Our first guest tonight to discuss the Mueller conflicts, the lack of collusion and any evidence thereof. The prospect of the president being interviewed at all. Joining us tonight, former Deputy Assistant Attorney General Tom Dupree. Tom, great to have you with us. This is uh, looking like a complete and utter mess uh, with all sorts of rhetoric uh, rising in temperature and tone. And meanwhile, Manafort goes to trial tomorrow and Mueller has still no evidence. And we're more than two years into the investigation of the president for collusion with Russia. What gives? (laughs) Well, Lou, I agree that things are heating up. To me, at least, it was striking that, as you point out, over the weekend, the president really has taken his offensive against Bob Mueller to a new level. He's alleging conflicts of interest. He's talking about how Mueller might be compromised because of his business disputes, because he was denied the job of director of the FBI. My sense is that the president knows that even if he doesn't have a legal argument that would warrant Mueller's disqualification, that's not the president's audience. He is playing to the court of public opinion, and he is seeding the bed and planting doubts in the minds of the American public about the integrity of Bob Mueller and Bob Mueller's team. Yeah, and and this has been going on for some time, uh, this uh, appeal to the court of public opinion, because the special counsel is leaking left and right, behaving like uh, nothing so much as a a prosecutor. Uh, He is more, if you will, uh, you know, uh, he's on a jihad of some sort. And it's an ideologically inspired jihad. Uh, It is unseemly. The Bar Association has no problem with it. The legal uh, profession, if it can be safely called that, uh, has uh, simply permitted it without comment. Uh, There is no independent objective voice now whatsoever to be heard. It is appalling what has happened and what has been permitted by the Republican leadership in both the House and the Senate. Uh, This is a disaster for the country. And the president, frankly, has been to me so wronged that it is uh, almost impossible to make it all right. 
Well, at the end of the day, I think it is Congress that may make the call here. If you think, as I do, that there would be constitutional problems with indicting a sitting president, then the only remedy would be impeachment. And as you know, that's something that would be decided by the Congress. So the fact that Trump, the fact that Mueller, the fact that everyone is focused on the equities here, public opinion really spinning this and framing this the way that they want to, makes all the sense in the world if you think ultimately it's yeah. Congress that could get called in here. Yeah, actually, I think that somehow there should be a legal action against Robert Mueller for taking on uh, the political responsibility of the Congress and the Senate uh, instead of um, a legal proceeding uh, against the president. Uh, you, you said impeachment. My God, Tom, what would they impeach him for? Where's the high crime? Where? Well, Where? well so, so there isn't Mueller... even a low crime. You, <laughs> so, yeah, I was going to say, I, you're the attorney, <laughs> you're the prosecutor, the de former deputy attorney general. How in the hell can anyone in the Justice Department go to work and say, "What am I doing today? I'm persecuting the president of the United States, and we've been doing it for over two years. And by the way, there's not a damn bit of evidence. Who? <laughs> what person can look themselves in a mirror and say? they have any integrity at all. Well, the, the constitutional standard is high crimes and misdemeanors, and so far we haven't seen any evidence of that on the president's behalf. Okay, now, let's, let's go to low crime. Let's go to little <laughs> bitty damn crime. I mean, let's keep well, this thing real. There is no evidence of any crime whatsoever, high or low. I, I think at this point, Mueller has not shown his cards, if he has the cards to play. He has not linked any sort of meetings with the Russians. Maybe he gets, you know, Trump's relatives or people close to the president, but he hasn't shown anything linking the president himself to something that would warrant impeachment. So what are we to do? I, I mean, you're saying that the default here is instead of being persecuted by a damn special counsel, and excuse me for swearing, but I am so frustrated and annoyed and disgusted with this entire process and the cowards, the cowardly fools in our, the leadership of our Congress and our Senate who have permitted this to go on. I, what is, what is the, the default is impeachment for no crimes being found or no evidence of crimes being found during a special counsel investigation? That now becomes the default position? Really, Tom? No, I really? think the default, the default position would be Bob Mueller gives the president a clean bill of health, that he wraps this investigation up in a few months, and he says, I have found no evidence of wrongdoing by the president. Wrap it up in a few months? How about in a few hours? Well, There's uh, nothing I, there. I mean, what do, I, what do we need? A little, uh, uh, you know, 400-page document full of well, nonsense and blather that uh, amount to nothing because nothing is the starting point. It's all they could report. How many pages should that be? One, maybe two. Well, it, it, as we know from American history, these independent counsel investigations are always far longer than you thought they were going to be, not shorter. But it doesn't seem to me out of the question that if Mueller gets what he wants, which is to say an interview with the president, that he would be in a position to bring Mueller. this thing to close. Tom, the hell with what he wants. This is no longer, I mean, this is not a game. This is the president of the United States. This nation deserves full-time leadership and no further uh, effort to subvert, uh, to overthrow uh, the presidency of Donald J. Trump. It's ignorant and it's beyond belief that our so ideologically committed left-wing national media can't even br bring itself to be honest about what is happening every day in front of them and, and, and indeed the country. My concern, Lou, is that if the president tells Mueller to go take a hike, we are going to be inviting years more of litigation. If Mueller then subpoenas the president and that is battled through the federal courts for another year, that is going to consume even more of this White House's time and prevent the president and his administration from focusing on the things that matter to the American people. So what would you rate the score at right now? Special counsel versus President Donald J. Trump. What is the score? Because well, he's, it's actually... Uh, Counsel Robert Mueller versus the United States of America. Well, and, and as far as the score goes, I, I hope that we're in the eighth inning, not in the second inning of this game. However, I would say at this point, I don't think the special counsel has scored any points against the president. Now, to be sure, the special counsel hasn't released his final report. He still may have evidence we haven't seen, but it seems to me if there were something, we probably would have heard about it by now. I think that you said that in a rather elegant way. What you're saying is there is no way in the world 
that evidence of wrongdoing in the special counsel, in the possession of the special counsel, could have survived in Washington, D.C. without it being leaked a year ago. Uh, I, I would be ago. very impressed <laughs> if they kept that under wraps. Tom Dupree, always good to have you here. Thank you Thanks, so Lou. much. Up next, President Trump repeats his threat to shut down the government, calling on the rhinos, the radical Dems, to support his plan to secure the border. After many, many years of talk within the United States, I would have no problem doing a shutdown. It's time we had proper border security with a laughing stock of the world. Now, it's, uh, it's perhaps past time. Uh, we'll bring up that issue, of course, and assess its uh, a likely chance of success and much, much more. The Dean of Political Strategists, Ed Rollins, joins us here next. Stay with us. We're coming right back. President Trump today saying he is willing to shut the government down to get the wall built and the border secured. President Trump's statements came in a joint press conference with Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte, where he called U.S. immigration laws the laughing stock of the world. The president's words, unfortunately, seem to be falling on deaf ears among the rhinos in Congress, as they usually do. I certainly don't like playing uh, shutdown politics. I don't think it'd be helpful, so let's uh, try and avoid it. I don't think we're going to shut down the government. We're going to make sure we keep the government open, but we're going to get better policies on immigration. If the president wants to shut down the government, uh, you know, that's his prerogative. Uh, I, don't, I, I think it would be a mistake, and I don't think it's going to be necessary. Well, I, it'd be interesting to see the over and under on uh, whether it's necessary. Oklahoma Congressman Tom Cole towing the rhino line as he always does. Congressman Cole said, quote, we're going to have a challenging midterm anyway, and I don't see how putting the attention on shutting down the government when you control the government is going to help you. I believe, Congressman Cole, that that is the president's point. Congratulations, you perceive correctly his leadership on this issue. Joining us now, Ed Rollins, former Reagan White House political director, Great America PAC chairman, Fox political analyst, great American, great friend, and shut down the government. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I absolutely love it. I think the country will love it if it's on a legitimate issue and the president has laid the, laid the groundwork. Uh, what do you mean if it's a legitimate issue? It's about securing the border. It's about a, I, building not, the doggone wall. I, you always have to let me finish. Uh, well, I thought I heard a period. There was sort of a I, sound there. A, I'm an old man. I sometimes have to hesitate <laughs> to get my thoughts all correct. President promised, the president promised he was going to build a wall. He got elected on that issue as much as anything else. You go back and ask the people who voted for him, what was the most important thing? Build that wall. We're now, in, we're now past the second, going to the second year, going into the midterms here, and the Congress is, is doing a stall. Uh, they, they, they're stonewalling. They're stonewalling. They and, are and, absolutely and, and covering and, And I would rather go down on principle. And then you've got the Koch brothers who are out there. I'd now rather the other guy go down on principle. I want it to be my principle, and I want the I want the enemy, the opposition, the radical Dems, to go down. Well, my sense is they're all basically as the Republicans are all starting to worry about losing. So I think this is a high risk game, and I think the president ought to basically. Do you think these rhinos are made out of starch? I mean, do you think <laughs> no. they are strong and I, powerful? I know uh, them. Remember, I'm around the congressional committee. I've been around them all my life. Well, I don't uh, understand uh, why you put that in the hypothetical. I, 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 all right, then I'll, 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 it won't be hypothetical. If the president fights on this issue, he will basically energize his base. If his base is not energized, this Republican party is going to get clobbered in the midterms. I will say that flatly here. The other side is going to be energized, and we have to get our side energized, or we're going to lose big time. You know what I think, and, and I would like to test this. I truly believe the American people who voted for this president, who want to vote for this president, who believe in him thoroughly uh, and absolutely, would rather President Trump shut down the government if, if McConnell and Ryan persist in being anti-Trumpers and being subversive of the government that is duly elected, they'd rather that if it's if it were to have to be, if it would have to be, that President Trump be a one-term president and show the world what these rhinos have done to this great nation. Because McConnell and Ryan are every bit the subversives 
that anyone in the Democratic Party is. The Schiffs, the Schumers, uh, all of these. Uh, well, what, what amazes me, Lou, is that the guys had nothing but success on every major issue since he got elected. And this was the big promise. And we still don't have immigration and we don't and, and we're no closer to it. And so the whole premise of, well, wait till after the election, we'll get immigration you have. reform. You have, you have Paul Ryan the other day waving his little stupid pamphlet around uh, as if he actually is so delusional, and, and apparently he is, to think that that is some sort of counterpoint to the president's agenda that he was elected president. Well, I actually went out and read his agenda the, over the weekend. Oh, my gosh. You've got a strong stomach. Uh, there's no there there. There's absolutely no there there. Uh, and, and so well, why don't we tell some people what is in there? Uh, entitlement reform. Uh, the, the good, uh, yeah. the good speaker would like. What would he like to do? He'd like to cut entitlements. That's a brilliant way to get votes in a midterm election or a general election for president. It doesn't make it. this. The guy is delusional, and the conference is walking around like uh, you know he's the Pied Piper. Right. Well, you know, unfortunately, they don't understand their bread and butter comes with this president, and the success that they've had has been because of him. How could, so, how could it be a misunderstanding? This president has delivered four point. One percent unemployment. He has he has delivered the lowest unemployment rate for our minorities in history. He has delivered seven, eight trillion dollars in the market. He's delivered four point one percent growth in the economy, four uh, percent in unemployment. Uh, this is a president who has deregulated everything. He's rolled back almost everything that Barack Obama could do. Uh, it's it's more than you would think. Well, that's the speech uh, in dere and deregulation. That's, I mean, it's that, extraordinary. That's the speech every candidate I should be giving out there, and they're not. I'm just telling you, they're not. I'm, I monitor this pretty closely. There are very few of them talking so, about tax reform. Very few of them talking about the benefits that this president. Has so given then out. we have to go to this this consideration: Is President Trump better off with all of these rhinos and Ryan's and McConnells defeated? And a Democratic uh, majority in the House, unlikely in the Senate. Uh, or is he better off with a majority? Of, you know, I, I, I would argue of these uh, yellow-bellied uh, pretend Republicans. I would argue at this point in time he he needs to go out and help elect them, and he will. And I think if they win again in the House, it's going to be because of his efforts, not their efforts. And he better claim credit. So is he going to come back then? From the elections, having won, and have to put up with this again? Only if what's he, the percentage in that? Only if he. Only if he, I'd rather put up with them for two <laughs> years and get rid of the bunch of them and have real. The problem is, we get rid of a bunch of them. Just one quick thing here: you get rid of a bunch of them. We have reapportionment coming in in two years, and we've had all these great gains, legislative, what have you. And you don't want to lose them; you want to gain on them. And in my sense, is it, it'll hurt us long term if we don't do that. So. We need to build a I, Trump party. I, yeah, well, that's exactly what and we, we don't need. have a Trump and party. And that's no way to do it. But we, we keep bringing these. No, well, we don't. Do you, want, you want to bring Cole back? Do you, you want to see these guys come back? I don't think so. Ed, you and I are going to have to work this thing through. We're going to have to develop this. We're going to have to think I'm deep. I'm all for it. All right. Okay, Bell. That's going to fall mainly on you. I understand. Deep that. thinking. Ed Rollins, thanks so much. <laughs> Congressman Ron DeSantis' campaign has launched a new, uh, and I have to say, terrifically lighthearted ad. Featuring his family, DeSantis, making sure voters of Florida know he's a lot more than just a Trump supporter. Everyone knows my husband, Ron DeSantis, is endorsed by President Trump, but he's also an amazing dad. Ron loves playing with the kids. Build the wall. He reads stories. Then Mr. Trump said, you're fired. I love that part. He's teaching Madison to talk. Make America great again. Don't you love it? President Trump set to hold a rally with Congressman DeSantis in Tampa tomorrow. You will please, please join us tomorrow for our special coverage of that event right here from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern. Hope you'll be with us. Be sure to vote in our poll tonight. The question is, do you agree with President Trump that the wall must be built and the border must be secured, even if it means shutting down the federal government to wake up the GOP rhino leadership? Cast your vote on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. We'd like to hear from you. Follow me on Twitter at Lou Dobbs. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Instagram at Lou Dobbs tonight. Up next, the oldest member of the Supreme Court, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, revealing her retirement plans. Get excited. 
because we're going to have the details for you right after this quick break. Stay with us. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I love how we always she's got three names and we get to say them all. Announcing she plans to retire from the Supreme Court three years into President Trump's second term in office, if we can put it that way. She is 85 years old. She's the court's oldest member. She said over the weekend she has at least five more years left on the bench. We did a little math. We worked it out. And President Trump will have a lot to celebrate in his uh, eighth year in office. The board of directors at CBS has decided to keep Les Moonves on as CEO and chairman for now. But uh, the board is not entirely confident launching an investigation into the sexual assault allegations that they have heard against him. CBS releasing a statement today saying the board is in the process of selecting outside counsel now to conduct an independent investigation. No other action was taken today on the matter. Joining us, Greg Jarrett, Fox Business uh, legal analyst and author of the newly released book. There, wait for it. The Russia hoax, the illicit scheme to clear Hillary Clinton and frame Donald Trump. Bestseller, brilliant book. Uh, and uh, congratulations again. Thank you. It's a bestseller. It's a wonderful book. It is. Thing. It was so. uh, number one on Amazon's bestseller list. So. And uh, you always have to do attribution. You've got footnotes. By the way, his book is so footnoted. Uh, that I'm, I haven't seen anything like that since I was in college. I mean, to see that many uh, footnotes is extraordinary. But you had to have it bulletproof. I understand your reasoning. And, yes. Uh, anyway, congratulations Thank on you the book. Thank you very recommend much. recommend it to you highly, uh, as highly as highly can be. Thank you. Uh, very nice. And uh, we join others in that, uh, I must say, a, a pantheon of... Uh, of talent uh, recommending the book. Some other people have read it right. and have endorsed it. And, and think Rush it's, Limbaugh, uh, Sean Hannity. Right. Uh, a couple of top officials, uh, formerly of the FBI, read it. Anybody and, else in government uh, that's actually stepped right out there and uh, said, buy this I, book? A fellow named Trump, I think. The uh, President I Trump. Think, that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a couple what, of times each I think week. that's what we call a topper. <laughs> Good for you. And uh, let, let's turn, <laughs> you know, I, I guess... I think this is probably as annoyed as I've been about this whole mess today because it is so conspicuously and obviously and patently a witch hunt. It is such a wrong of a president who is historic already in his achievements. Uh, and uh, the, the national left wing media is so complicit with the Dems, the, the radical Dems, uh, the left uh, and the rhinos that it's just, it's nauseating. It is gut-wrenching. It is appalling. Well, I think there's no question, but that top officials at the FBI and the Department of Justice uh, use their positions of power to ignore the rule of law, to subvert it, uh, and try to yeah. undermine the democratic process. And then when that failed, they double down and try to undo the presidential election. Is there in your judgment any greater crime uh, any greater wrong being done the president than by the leadership of the republican party who refuse the leadership of the republican party right. who refused to stand with this president who refused to tell uh, rod rosenstein the deputy attorney general uh, others to just step aside robert Mueller is done we're through i, I honestly have never seen an official, top official of the Department of Justice, who has so blatantly uh, defied lawful subpoenas uh, and treated Congress with contempt. It is only fair that he should be held in contempt himself, and I think also impeached, although it's hard to get two-thirds in the Senate to accomplish that. It's impossible. That. It is. You know that. And, we and, all... and, and, but the very idea that they don't bring the weight of their their positions as leaders of the Republican Party. The fact is that the Democratic Party is underwriting this this travesty. Right. Uh, it says enough that I, I, I don't know that the, that the Democratic Party should win another election. But this is how government works. When officials engage in wrongdoing, they then engage in a cover-up of the wrongdoing, and that's what Rosenstein is doing. 
mean, he affixed his signature to the renewal on the wiretap without new evidence, which the regulations we demand. We can go through a litany yes. of wrongs by the investigators, but the FBI, the Justice Department. We, we can go through all He's of leading the cover. Court. There's not a single wrong by this president, his campaign, or his administration. Right. And, and there was never any probable cause to launch the investigation so against So how him. do we extricate our government from the grip of this toxic, corrupt government that is presided over by uh, radical Dems and the deep state. You have to drain the swamp, which is what the president wanted to do, which is why they went after him and accused him of crimes he didn't commit, because they are the swamp. They didn't want to be drained. They wanted a third term for do? Barack Obama, which was Hillary Clinton. I get it. What do we do now? What does this president do now? You heard Tom Dupree say... Uh, that it might create more trouble than the man has now. The moment if he were to fire Mueller uh, and Rosenstein. The, the moment Robert Mueller ends his investigation, presumably with a report, the very next day I would fire Jeff Sessions and Rod Rosenstein just to begin with. For that reason, can you imagine Robert Mueller handing over a report to the American people this year? Uh, can you I he will either do it in September, as Giuliani suggests, or after the midterm elections, because he doesn't want to uh, pull a Comey, as they call it. Which You're is, telling me this man does not want to intervene in um, the governance of our nation? He doesn't want to intervene? It was, he doesn't in want to be election? accused, as Comey was, of influencing uh, an election. Late. I'm already accusing him of doing just exactly <laughs> that. Well, I This think has that, no other purpose. I agree. I agree completely. James Comey triggered the appointment of the special counsel by stealing and leaking government documents, and it turned out to be his longtime friend and ally and colleague Robert Mueller, who has assembled nothing but a team of partisans and refused to recuse himself in the face of not one but three major conflicts of interest. Americans should have no confidence in the integrity of Mueller and his investigation. I don't see why they would have any confidence in in the Justice Department of the FBI. Oh, I agree. The oh, hard at all. Right. Greg Jarrett, congratulations on the book. Great Thank to you. see you tonight. Nice Good of you to say hi to us, even though you're now a published best-selling <laughs> author. That's it's awfully. <laughs> oh my! Awfully Here it comes. You. Here it comes. Greg Jarrett, I'm going to so suffer much. for a while. You better believe it. Thanks, Luke. Up next, President Trump defends law enforcement along the border. Repeated attacks from the radical Dems, notwithstanding. I have to take my hat off to the Border Patrols for the law enforcement, to ICE, which really has been maligned by the Democrats. They go into these MS-13 nests, the nests of bad, bad people, killers in many cases, and they get them out. They either go to jail or they get out of the country. We'll take it up with the uh, National Border Patrol Council president, the uh, Border Patrols Union. Brandon Judd joins us here next. And by the way, you hear lots of politicians thanking the Border Patrol, don't you, uh, in Immigration and Customs Enforcement. I remember there's a sen no, I can't remember a senator, not a congressman. But we have a president who does say thank you and is grateful and represents the expression of most Americans. We'll be right back. Stay with us. A federal judge praised the Trump administration for reunifying more than 1,800 illegal children with their families. Uh, George W. Bush appointee Judge Dana Sabraw says the government deserves great credit for meeting his strict one-month deadline that sent agencies scrambling to reunite young children separated from their parents. Well, joining me now, President of the National Border Patrol Council, the, uh, uh, the union for the Border Patrol, Brandon Judd. Great to have you with us, Brandon. Uh, the president now threatens to shut down the government if uh, as he, the Dems and the rhinos who lead the Republican Party don't deliver the construction of the wall. Your reaction? 
I'm a federal employee. I'm not speaking on behalf of the federal government, but I can tell you as a Border Patrol agent, I would support shutting down the government if, in fact, it was going to lead to border security. This is a topic that we've been discussing for years on end. I mean, I've been a Border Patrol agent for 21 years now. This is something that comes up year after year after year. We finally need to get a hold of this. This is not we're not talking about legal immigration. We're talking about illegal immigration, and we need to finally get a handle on it. And this president is trying to make that happen. He's trying to make it happen. He also is opposed by uh, the business roundtable, the Chamber of Commerce, Wall Street, uh, corporate uh, U.S. multinationals, not corporate America, U.S. Uh, multinationals, uh, and the Koch brothers, who announced they're spending $400 million to be sure that those borders are wide open and that illegal immigrants have a free pass. How does that make you feel? Well, that's the problem that Border Patrol agents face. We, we, we look at it from the left, and they want voters. We look at it from the right, and they want cheap labor. And we're caught in the middle trying to fix a problem that has existed for years on end, and we're not getting the support from either side, from either the Democrats or the Republicans. And it, it becomes... Possible task, and unfortunately, this is an uphill battle that the president, thank goodness, is willing to take on, and, and hopefully, he wins this battle. Uh, without question, and uh, this is a president fighting the Koch brothers, uh, and it's not a fight that he sought, uh, but nonetheless, that's where we are. The Koch brothers are basically saying to every working man and woman in this country, uh, every uh, American family, our American middle class, the hell with you, and they mean it. And they're putting their money where their mouth is, and they're trying to dress it up as an anti-Trump message when it's an absolutely anti-American message that they are sending loud and clear across the entire country. It is one of the most appalling, arrogant things I've ever seen from uh, even uh, the, uh, the, the Koch oligarchs, uh, but particularly Charles Koch. It's disgusting. It's appalling to see that. It and if you look at this, I mean, what the American public has to understand is border security is an issue of national security. It's an issue of economic security. It's an issue of public safety. Uh, when Why doesn't secure, Charles Koch understand that? Uh, he does. He does. But he, again, everybody comes into this with their own interests. I mean, Charles Koch wants to continue to make more money. You know, wins enough, enough. And, and I'm not saying that there is enough. But when you look at it, they're looking at how is it that they can make their pockets even deeper. And unfortunately, they're doing it on the backs of hardworking Americans who want a safe and secure country, that want a country of laws. I mean, that's doing the it on reason the backs why of every American, because what they do is they change the character of this country, the culture of this country, uh, and the safety and sovereignty of this country. And by the way, just to keep it all in context, when is enough enough? Uh, we're talking about $120 billion for the Koch brothers. Uh, that's a pretty good net worth. Perhaps not enough uh, as you apply, but uh, that's for them to know and for the rest of us just to kind of guess about. Brent and Judd, great yeah. to have you with us. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Up next, deadly wildfires unleashing havoc and destruction across Northern California. We'll have the latest from the scene straight ahead. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Eight people are dead. Fires ravaging much of Northern California. The pictures that you see here are live from Santa Clarita, just north of Los Angeles, where a wildfire is growing uh, by the minute there. Across the state, more than 700 homes have been destroyed. More than 50,000 people evacuated. Uh, authorities say they've contained about 20% of those fires that are obviously still raging tonight across nearly uh, all of the state. Uh, New York Times publisher Arthur A. G. Salzberger complaining to President Trump about the potential for violence against journalists. It appears his paper and the rest of the national left-wing media aren't interested in actual violence like you're seeing here against supporters of President Trump. The hypothetical and the real. Not under discussion by Salzberger. Just last week, a U.S. Marine was assaulted in Hollywood by left-wing attackers because he was wearing his Trump jersey and a USA hat. Joining us tonight, Harmeet Dillon, Republican National Committee woman for California. Great to have you with us. 
Mark Simone, radio Thanks. personality for New York's WOR. Uh, great to have you both with us. And let's let's just start with, uh, Hermit, your your reaction to uh, a scion of the Salzberger family, the Times uh, dynasty, uh, holding forth about. I, I could almost see him reaching for his snuff box <laughs> as he as he said, you know, I'm concerned about the potential for violence against journalists in all of this, Mr. Yeah, no President. These guys are totally out of touch. The crocodile tears from the media should be juxtaposed against the fact that they do sp uh, spout lies and slanted stories all day long. I mean, 90 percent of the stories about our president are negative. A uh, Gallup poll earlier this year showed that nearly half of Americans don't trust the media and can't name an unbiased source. And so, you know, in this backdrop, the only violence that's happening here on the national stage is members of Congress and now a senator encouraging violence against Trump supporters. We're actually seeing that happen. I mean, I have a lawsuit here against against uh, San Jose for violence against Trump supporters in 2016. So, uh, I, and they're not reporting on that. They're reporting on their own, you know, sort of navel-gazing concerns, which are not what most Americans are concerned about. Yeah, agitprop for the most part. Uh, your thoughts, Mark? I thought it was the most ridiculous meeting. He was so naive. He actually said to the president at one point, I've had to put armed guards in front of my building. And the president said, you didn't have armed guards before? Every building in New York has <laughs> armed guards. How could you be operating without armed guards on a major skyscraper in New York? Well, let's see. The registration is about <laughs> seven to one Democrat in, uh, in Manhattan. So I, I, he may, maybe he felt himself. I love the name, A.G. Swampburger. It's yeah, just perfect. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> well done, as usual, Mark. Let, let, let's take this uh, uh, this business with the rhinos that the president is really dealing with. He said he was talking to Dems, but he, you could see he was being inclusive. Uh, Armid, he was talking about the rhinos as well, particularly who reside in the speakership uh, and in the uh, leader's office, the majority leader's office in the Senate, when he said he's going to shut down the government if he doesn't get his wall, uh, which he promised to the American people, his supporters, uh, and which he has made clear all along. And where were they yeah. denying this during the campaign? They were just enjoying the benefits, I believe. Your thoughts? Yes, Lou, for eight years, almost every member of Congress in our party has campaigned on this issue of border security and tightening up our immigration system. They raise money off of it. We got emails about it. And then when it, you know, push comes to shove, they're nowhere to be seen. In fact, they're actively undermining the president's agenda. There's not just this issue. You know, we saw it with Obamacare and some other issues as well. And so I've heard it said on this network, and I agree that I think with 100 days left to go, uh, we really need a leader uh, of the Congress there who's going to lead the forces and sort of do what they promised and not be a lame duck who's kind of looking well, to his next job. It's really disappointing what I see from my party on this. On cue uh, with our uh, crack production staff, uh, up come pictures of McConnell, Mark, and Ryan. Uh, what hope do you hold that they would in any way be interested in the middle class working men and women and their families? Uh, and the sovereignty and security of the country. 300 million people. And we, this, these two is who we ended up with. You, you wrote a great book, A War in the Middle Class, years ago. Right. And, and you were absolutely right. The war is, this is World War II now on the middle class. I said right. I mean, thank you. <laughs> well, no, it was a great book. And it's an ongoing problem. And that border is wide open, not due to laziness or sloppiness. It's deliberate. Uh, all those special interests from the business roundtable to whoever are uh, working with these two snakes in the swamp to keep that wide open. You know, to, to Mark's point, uh, Harmeet, uh, the Koch brothers, I, I mean, attacking really, not Donald Trump, even though that's what their network is doing, putting up $400 million to run against in this uh, next cycle, to run against Republicans who don't obey uh, the they're the mighty and the wealthy and the powerful Koch brothers. Uh, it, it is just so stunning to see them carrying out class warfare because that's what they're doing. They're attacking working men and women, their families, and the American middle class just as sure as anything. Uh, how can the Republican Party let them get away with it? Well, for one thing, they're actually having it both ways, Lou. A lot of the Coke uh, industrial complex is surrounding the president. There are a lot of the lawyers in the administration or people who are tied to the Cokes in some way or the other. Oh, yes. They have their fingers everywhere. I mean, in the White House, you got lawyers who are tied to that. And so they, they have it both ways. You're absolutely correct. In well, they're California, trying to we have see it this both more ways. than any other state. 
Well, yeah, I mean, they, so far they, yes, you're correct. Uh, so here in California, we see that, uh, you know, it's the big business interests who are pushing to keep the immigration problem from being solved, both at the low income level with agricultural workers mm -hmm. and get, uh, and at the highest level with tech workers in Silicon Valley. So and by the way, that our part party needs to stand firm. In 40 years. Yeah. Uh, all about yeah, labor, no, it's the same. Yeah. the growers, the Western yeah, Growers yeah. Association, and on it goes. You know, there's a deep Farm, state. We got to remember, yeah. there's a deep swamp too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's armed right. And dangerous. That's right. Mark Simone and Harmi Dillon, thank you both. Appreciate it. Come back soon. My pleasure. Up next, remember when Bernie Sanders said this: "Today, we say the function of a rational health care system is to provide quality care to all." in a cost-effective way. Eloquence. Eloquence. A new study has that cost-effective price established now. Wait until you see that cost-effective so-called number. Uh, catch me tonight as well on Fox News as I join Tucker Carlson to talk about congressional rhinos, Department of Justice stonewalling, the Trump immigration agenda, border security, and even more. Stick around. We'll be right back. Senator Bernie Sanders announced last year, you may well recall, that he wanted Medicare for all as a cost-effective way to ensure the American people. A new study, however, uh, raising some questions. The Mercatus Center at George Mason University. Sanders' plan, they estimate, would cost American taxpayers $32.6 trillion over a 10-year period. Is what they call other people's money under socialism. We thank you for being with us. Hope you join us here tomorrow. Thanks for being with us tonight. Rally tomorrow on Tampa.